Now I'd like to open the meeting to the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jim from Arizona, go ahead. Good evening. Love is the Liberator arrived and I've already read about half of it. I was especially pleased with the article involving Civil War veterans. I had heard this, of this event a number of years ago, but I was most grateful to, for the entire message, for it was such a very touching tale. When our magazine arrives, I immediately begin to read it, and I'm most grateful for the efforts of all those that are involved with publishing it. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I am very grateful for how much wonderful material this church offers. I've been so blessed to be a member here and to learn about Christian science and the true teachings of Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy. <clears throat> to wake each day and immediately know that God is my mind, my everything, has brought on such a difference for me. I used to wonder, will this be a good day or a bad day? Now I know that today is without a doubt going to be a good day. There is no other choice. Then moving on to the lesson, with each of them filled with so much to learn, gives me food for thought for the rest of the day. Where I used to spend the day thinking about nonsense or just daydreaming, now I have good and positive things to ponder. After that, I move on to my work and daily watching and daily practitioner support. I'm so grateful for having my days filled with usefulness and purpose and to be learning to focus only on God and His goodness. None of this would have been possible without this church and without the authentic Christian science I've been learning here. Thank you. Thank you. Lou Ann from New York, go ahead. Thank you. I am so grateful for the lessons in Christian science I have received from this church and my practitioner. Recently, I traveled to Plainfield so that I could attend the church services and offer some assistance in the maintenance of the building. It is a place I have come to cherish. One thing I brought home from my stay there was a strength and commitment to work harder, holding on to and utilizing the understanding I have gained. I realized while I was there that everything I was given and everything I experienced was a result of total dedication and service to God. In the following weeks, I worked steadily with the word faith and what is required to understand more thoroughly my oneness with the Father. I began to listen intently to the article entitled Oneness by Becknell Young and the chapter entitled Atonement and Eucharist in Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy. I am very grateful for what began to unfold. Then last week I encountered an opportunity to put into practice what I had gained in understanding. While I was drilling a piece of metal, the drill bit broke and plunged into my finger, leaving a very large and profusely bleeding hole. My first response was to see it as an attempt to draw me away from my faith in God, and I strongly denied its ability to do so. I felt no pain, but had to stop it from bleeding. The more I attended to it, the more I felt weak and dizzy. Then I thought, this is ridiculous. What good does it do to learn about God and my relationship with Him if I am not willing to make a consecrated effort to apply it to my daily life? My faith in God and the truths I have learned through the study of Christian science, the power and presence of God I experienced while with my practitioner and the members of the church in Plainfield, is everlasting truth and cannot be penetrated or weakened or turned aside in any way. I knew right then that God was working to perfect every aspect of my life. I covered the wound and went with gratitude to finish my project. That afternoon I found myself challenged once again 
to stand strong in truth as my sister, a retired nurse, saw the wound and began to tell me of all the complications that would come from not going to the hospital to have it properly treated. I held to my faith and understanding, denying every claim that was uttered by affirming its opposing truth. By evening, I had no need of a Band-Aid. The next morning, it was halfway healed. I called my practitioner, and she helped me hold firm in the truth. I felt great joy that God was holding my hand in his. In three days, I had gained full use of my finger. In seven days, the wound was completely gone. I am so grateful for everything I have learned here. I am grateful for all the love and guidance I have received from my practitioner, the demonstration of Christ's truth, and the healing power of God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah this is Bruce. I'd like to say how I was helped by our last round table last Sunday because there was a discussion about the uh, passage in the Bible where Jesus said, oh, don't go rejoicing because the devils are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. And there was a wonderful discussion that uh, came after that. And thank you, Florence, for bringing up uh, everything that you mentioned. But it also recall, came to mind a healing that I had in this church a number of years ago. I was still pretty new in the church, and of course I loved it, but had so much to learn. And there was a time when it seemed like one thing after another was coming into my experience that I had to take care of it, or so I felt. And I was taking care of things one by one, and wouldn't you know it, one more thing would land in my lap. And there was a teacher practitioner in the church at the t here at that time, and she saw what was going on. And she looked at me straight and says, you know, you don't have to fret about any of this. Your name is written in heaven. And I may not have understood completely what it meant at the time, but when she said that, I felt this immense sense of peace come over me. Like, I didn't have to be, feel like I was personally responsible to manipulate all these things to try to make them right. We have a wonderful God who is in charge here. And the idea was that I came here to this church to learn more about my God and about myself as his image and likeness. And even though I may see it very dimly, but still, I'm working on just that, and that is cause for rejoicing. And after that, these things that were coming at me like I needed to resolve them, they resolved. In fact, they stopped presenting problems after a while. But the thing that I was happy about was this very simple statement of truth that this practitioner gave me at the time, that my name is written in heaven, and therefore, I don't have to be fretting about all the things, feeling like I've got to take care of them all with my human knowledge, so to speak. I'm grateful that this healing came back to me, and I'm very grateful for the wonderful discussion that happened in our round table last Sunday. Day Day from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I'm grateful for this week's Watching Point 299, which reads, Watch that you keep on keeping on, or continue in well-doing. It brings forth the idea that one does not complain about struggles on a journey when the destination is desirable. It goes on to say, quote, When one is seeking the true goal, which includes a daily effort to bless and help others, he does not complain much, nor notice what kind of day he has, unquote. This has been an invaluable lesson to me. Many years ago, I began working a very demanding retail job, and I would complain about it often, having some good and many bad days. I finally realized that I wouldn't find my way out of the position anytime soon, 
so I decided to take a different approach to change my attitude. I realized it was important to forget myself in order to focus on my purpose for going to work every day, which was to help or bless another. My change in attitude changed my situation completely, and I began to enjoy going to work every day. This allowed me to have a positive impact on my coworkers and customers daily. I've been in several positions since then, and I'm grateful that no matter where I go or what my work is to do, I'm always reminded that my goal is to help and bless another. This is made for consistent good days, for which I can't for which I can at least be grateful for the lessons learned in the midst of challenges. I'm so grateful for the reminder in this week's watching point, and I'm so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. And thank you. When I first found Plainfield on the internet, I had been searching for a long time to be able to practice Christian science. I was not brought up in the Christian Science Church, but found it after I left home and came to Washington. I needed more help than I was getting from the teacher whose class I attended. And feeling very alone about it and needing it very much because of the situation I found myself in. I fell into a deep depression for which I was hospitalized for a few weeks every fall for five years. But the pills and shock treatments were to me pointless. I kept searching for a better understanding of Christian science. Prior to this, I had attended three different Christian science churches at intervals. And I started finally, finally, after all this trouble with, that I was in, I started searching instead on the Internet, where I came across a paragraph from an article by Bignall Young, Consciousness, Where Art Thou?, which really spoke to me. And then there was a phone number there, so I dialed it, and my future practitioner answered my phone call. From then on, I attended the Plainfield Church sessions and services and was soon absolutely healed of fear and depression for good and forever. Words cannot express my gratitude to God, to Christ Jesus, to Mary Baker Eddy, to all these, all those dear people here, and to my practitioner. And thank you very much for the reading on the only power of evil is to destroy itself, which I'm learning here, and the story of Jehu. And also, I'm very grateful for the watches in which we, we have this special way of being able to bless others throughout the world. Thank you. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. Thank you. I'm very grateful to be here tonight to hear those powerful readings, the inspiring testimonies, and the beautiful music. The only thing better was to be in church in person last Sunday. The power and presence of God that I felt here and the joy that I carried away was much appreciated and continues to be a blessing. I'm very grateful for the website and recorded classes and services. Even when away from home, as my husband and I were last week, very grateful to still be able to touch the classes, even if not live. Since the September issue of the magazine, Love is the Liberator, came out, I've gone through it several times. There is so much good in it. There's an addition, number four, to the article, Watching by Parthens, which I found extremely helpful. In the first three points in her inside watch, Queen Esther establishes in her thought the omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence of God. Then in this last point, it tells what Esther did. Quote, Queen Esther refused to speak the slightest word or take the least human action 
to try to steady the ark by human effort. Instead, she chose to prostrate herself at the throne of God, like Mary Magdalene at the feet of Jesus. And by getting out of God's way, she released the infinite omni-activity of God Almighty. Thus, all the intricate years of Haman's murderous thoughts ground to a halt, then reversed their direction to destroy all her enemies as no activity exists in opposition to God. Close quote. This is what is taught in this independent church, which is loyal to Mary Baker Eddy's teaching, to get rid of personal sense, to get out of the way and see God work. I am very grateful for this and for all the blessings here. Thank you. Tom from New York, go ahead. Hi, thank you. I want to say that, uh, um, you know, uh, work is uh, really stressful, and I'm um, uh, having to, you know, mentally compete with uh, working on multiple things. Um, so this is work I was doing with something that's uh, very close. And I have to come to a conclusion as to what it means. And then write that out and then um, put together some evidence and give it to uh, a group on a formal basis to review it and everything. So, because I can't focus because there's so much going on. Like, I can do a lot of work, but to read this really technical stuff, you know, it's hard for me if I'm not, if, if I'm interrupted or anything. So I thought, okay, we'll just pray. And so I just pray for a couple minutes and then... Um, I'd look at it, and um, I was just amazed, like, oh, yeah, this is what i got to do. And then I, I do all the work i got to do, and it happens very quickly. That actually happened twice in the last few days. And then today, um, I was struggling with something where um, uh, another governance group, policy, what they are, had, had uh, disagreed with what I'd done, and they sent it off to actually even a more senior policy group. And so this is all becoming a really big to-do, I think, over nothing. But... I didn't quite know how to explain it so that they didn't, policy didn't have to go through all that work. So today, while I was busy with a lot of things, all of a sudden it occurred to me how you would book what I was thinking about on the ledger. Because I've been asking people for the longest time, how do you book this on the ledger? And no one seems to know. And so I told someone I was, I was working with on this, so oh, this is what you do. You have a credit, have a credit, this, that, so forth. Got it. So then, just before I left work tonight, I went back and read what policy was kind of dragging their heels on trying to figure out. And I read it, and I, and I thought, oh, this is crystal clear. In fact, it seemed like kindergarten or nursery school it was so clear. Anyway, this says nothing about me. That's the reason I'm calling in and saying thank you, because these things just don't happen. Because every time I had to read this very technical stuff, I would... Pause. I actually, in, in, in one case, left, went to another room and sat there for a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> but I did some praying before this. And, you know, I have to say, a, a lot of this is coming from practitioner support um, and, you know, just, just from the loving um, uh, community of the church. And I'm very, very grateful for Plainfield Church and everybody there. So thank you. Thank you. Wendy from Georgia, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for the inspirational readings and testimonies tonight. Uh, my heart is filled with gratitude this evening for the loving and caring practitioner support that we received recently. Once again, for our little dog, Dolce. About three weeks ago, while giving him a bath, I noticed several lesions on his stomach. I called our practitioner in this church for guidance and support. In addition, this was the same day that the governor of Georgia had declared a mandatory evacuation for residents of the Georgia coast, including Savannah. We decided to go ahead and take Dolce to see his vet, and at her recommendation, we drove Dolce up to the University of Georgia Veterinary Hospital in Athens, Georgia, which was a five-hour drive for us from Savannah. We arrived at the hospital emergency room, and he was admitted to the intensive care unit. 
As I pray to know the truth about Dolce and God's indisputable law of progress for him, I kept in daily communication with my practitioner. Dolce's condition improved dramatically each and every day, and he was allowed to go home with us the following Thursday. The vet who had been attending to him for those six days said his rapid healing and progress was just shy of a miracle. We picked him up that afternoon and drove him back to our home in Savannah, which, except for some debris in our yard, was completely untouched by the hurricane. I am most grateful to God for his unending and protecting love for us all and for all the wonderful help from my practitioner. And even though he may not be able to express it verbally, I know that Dolce is extremely grateful too. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell. Good evening. And thank you for the wonderful readings and the beautiful music. Powerful readings. Tonight, I would like to share something that happened because of being a member here where I receive practitioner support and I'm learning to listen to God's direction, which I believe is living our spiritual sense. I was aware of a sound from my car that didn't sound perfectly normal to me. So instead of pushing through and waiting to see what might happen, I called a mechanic for help. In a very short time, he told me that I was correct and that our wonderful car needs a bearing and bushing replacement. This will all be taken care of very soon. I am most grateful for calm understanding and waiting on God's direction because he is the source of all good. As Proverbs 10, 22 states, quote, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Tonight, I would like to express my gratitude for the classes and services at Plainfield. My hands had become severely dry. Frequent use of various lotions was not effective, and using water was a problem, so I used gloves for my chores. One Sunday evening, I noticed my hands felt more comfortable and the dryness was fading, and they felt normal. A couple of days later, I realized I was using water without gloves, without discomfort, and no longer felt the need for the lotion. The severe condition did not return. I know the change was as a result of the healing classes and service that Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon. Several weeks ago, I was looking for an important document. I couldn't find it. The thought came to me that nothing is lost in divine mind. And I stopped looking and I put it in God's hands. And then a short time later, I got the thought from Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy, divine love always has met and always meet every human need. The next day I got a thought to look in a different place, but I had looked there before, but the thought came that I needed to retrace my steps. And the thought, a power, the power of a right idea cannot be stopped. Well, I looked for about five minutes and I found the document which had been misfiled. I am so grateful to God for his constant care, for practitioner help, for all I'm learning in this church, and for the readings and lessons that we have here. Thank you. Thank you. Florence. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, so much for the wonderful and awakening readings and the strengthening hymns. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the testimonies thus far. Tonight I have a testimony from someone who was introduced to Christian science while incarcerated. Since he came out of prison, 
He has been following science through our forum highlights, lessons, and consistent reading of science and health and his Bible and living it the best he can. His testimony tonight is this. My wife and I recently welcomed our baby girl, and she is due to go back to work soon. Our work hours are the same, so she started worrying. I remain calm and have been praying, trusting that God will give us an answer. And my wife has been complaining that I act as though I have no worries. I have explained that I have confidence in God to guide us as to what to do. Next Monday is when she's supposed to go to work. Last Monday, this past Monday, I got a call from a company I had applied to over a year ago offering me a position on the night shift with a $7 an hour pay increase than what I make now. God has fixed the situation. This means I can be home with our newborn during the day and my wife will be home during the night. God does answer prayer when we ask in faith and I'm so grateful to him. I will continue to honor, respect, and love the understanding I am gaining from Christian science. I am so grateful for what this gentleman is doing. I'm so grateful because I know that it is his humble obedience to what he's learning. He doesn't follow everything we are doing, but the simple things that he has come to understand, he's using. And when I talk to him, I can feel his sincerity in following science. So grateful to God, so grateful to Mrs. Eddy, for making the way Jesus lived practical for everyone who even has the slightest understanding, if sincerely they put it in practice, there are results. So grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Mary. I have a letter here tonight uh, from Florida. Dear members, we are grateful for the many blessings received through the abundant outpouring of your faithful church. The many books, lessons, Bible study groups, daily email, and beautiful resources available on your website have enriched our lives in Christ. Joyful blessings. And then from our church website, bulletin board um, from Massachusetts. Quote, Earth can no more quake in a fearful sense than can the multipli multiplication table. Christian science, it's clear, correct teaching by Herbert Eustace. The unity prayer last night was filled with powerful ideas. Thank you to those who put it together. I will continue working with the entire prayer. The particular part of the quote listed above gave me a clear understanding that the earth is an indestructible idea as the multiplication table, that it is not in harm's way, but is eternally at peace. The entire prayer is wonderful. And then also about the article, Idealism and Realism from Addresses by Martha Wilcox, read by Carol Conroy. Thank you, Carol, for the beautiful reading of this article. I am getting a clear understanding that, quote, divine ideas are eternal facts at hand, end quote, as stated by Martha Wilcox. I'm so grateful to this church for the bountiful ways in which to gain a better understanding of Christian science. This church makes ideas tangible and practical for everyday living and healing, and also makes learning Christian science a lot of fun, too. Thank you. And then also, yesterday I received a call uh, from someone I'd never heard from before, from Washington State, and she just called to say she found our website in the spring and how much she has loved it and 
wanted to express particular thanks for the last two songs that our group sang at church. Um, the one, He Has It All in Control, and then the one from Sunday, Here I Am, Lord. Um, she asked if who the, who the author was. She thought maybe we had written them. But anyway, she said it touched her so that she just was impelled to call and express gratitude. So we are so grateful to be hearing from people all around the world, certainly all around our country, uh, with such gratitude. I'm grateful tonight for the readings as well. I found it interesting that a good part of the readings in miscellaneous writings, they were from the first address in the Mother Church from 1895 given by Mrs. Eddy. Now, those readings were not, as you've heard, were not lightness and flowers. They were tough remarks on the importance of understanding the workings of evil. She gives the three, first to, to understand sin, then to repent of it, and then to have an understanding of goodness. And how important this is and that if you don't, and if you, you don't thoroughly repent of sin, you're really not a Christian scientist. And it's interesting, too, because if my recollection is correct, when she gave this address at the Mother Church, first one, uh, she said afterwards, she looked out at the congregation, and she did not see one Christian scientist. So that is a very sobering Remark, and it means to me to work more diligently, more faithfully, and as these readings so clearly brought out, to understand the workings of error and know how to handle them so that they are wiped out, abolished, because they are not the truth. They are not the truth, but we can't just wave a magic wand and say everything is fine and nothing. Nothing evil exists. We have to work the problem out and prove it. So I'm grateful tonight for this independent Christian science church, the teachings that I received from a practitioner here who was bold enough, courageous enough to give those teachings, not to avoid the handling of evil and animal magnetism, but to face it head on so that we can as well, and so that we can experience true healing in Christian science, and also to bless and heal the world. I'm so grateful to be here tonight to hear the beautiful music, the wonderful testimonies, the readings, and to be with you all. Thank you.